Welcome, everybody. I am Tom Anderson, and this is Webinar on Wednesday with Destinations Together. As always, a warm welcome to our Zoom listeners and Cruise Line executives that are tuning in. Here are a few key news items for the week. As the U.S. continues to reopen, new COVID cases continue to increase, with a record-breaking 4.36 million cases in the United States and 16.8 million worldwide. German tour operator FTI Group announced that it is shutting down its one ship cruise operation. The CDC is asking for public in input on new protocols with a submission deadline of September 21st. Additional CD additionally, CDC's no sale order is still in place through the end of September. In the shadow of these worldwide increases of COVID cases, destinations around the world are trying to get the economy open and resume everyday life. To that end, it is also time to seriously review your future plans to develop your strategy to reopen. Our recent webinars on Aegis and Resper highlighted products that work around the clock to help your team and your guests be safe. Today's webinar will help you successfully reopen your business by focusing on the six C's, which are concern, communicate, coach, collaborate, calibrate, and celebrate. I'm confident that you will find today's topic of great value and that, it may and that it might serve as the foundation of your strategic plan to reopen and undoubtedly will help future-proof your business. Today's presentation is hosted by Destinations Together, which is an open platform of relevant information and collaboration to help support the tourism industry. It is designed to help everyone connect, collaborate, and hopefully find solutions to bridge the gap until cruise ships and tourism return to your region. I'll turn this over to Larry to share some important information and then introduce our speaker for today's Destinations Together webinar on Wednesday. Hey, thanks, Tom. We wanna to thank everybody for joining us today. We also wanna recognize our guest speakers from Friday, June 22nd, featuring Biosafety Aegis Service Protection Program. Please check out our website for the recording of the Biosafety webinar and all the other ones that we've done over the past several weeks. Before we begin, let me remind you of a few important housekeeping items. We are recording the webinar and we'll upload it in the next several days. There's a Q&A tab below on your screen. We look forward to getting your questions that we can pose to Barry for his feedback. We encourage you all to vote on the questions listed in the Q&A to help ensure we include the most uh, relevant one. Please remember, we and our guests are only providing our opinion and possible sources for further intel. We're happy to have Barry Jacobson, a dear friend of mine from Disney Days, here to talk about the critical steps of uh, to reopen the six C's. Hey, Barry, welcome. So glad to have you with us. Thanks, Larry, for having me on, and thanks, Tom. Great to yeah. see you. We've known each other for a long time, and, and again, really appreciate you being here with us today and sharing the six C's and, and tons of stories that I know you have. So I know you've got uh, a lot of background with Disney and some other businesses over the years. And if there is one guy out there that knows guest service, it's truly you. So again, we ask you to, you know, one, share some of your background from where you started when you were, you know, I guess a little bit younger and you know, your fabulous career over the years. And then again, your presentation, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here and, you know, everyone listening, I hope you're safe and staying safe and wearing your masks and that, uh, during these unusual times, uh, all we can do is uh, hope for the future. And we know that we've got a lot of smart people out there working on this problem, but it's uh, great to be here. Uh, I was actually talking about my career this morning with someone and uh, really my first paycheck uh, was uh, picking tobacco uh, for Christian farms in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, shade tobacco. But my hospitality career uh, started with Disney. And I started as a uh, 
a very important role because every role at Disney has a purpose. Our purpose is to be make people happy, but my purpose was coming to work every day and being a lifeguard. Uh, we called ourselves recreation hosts back then. And I was fortunate enough to uh, work for Disney for 37 years in various roles, uh, culminating in a senior leadership role. But really, for 15 years, uh, I worked in the resort side of the business, hotel operations, uh, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, the Contemporary Resort, if you're familiar with those beautiful hotels. Spent some time at the campground as well. Uh, and that was a fantastic experience, everything from tents to large motorhomes. Uh, did a stint for a while in resort special activities, handling all our VIPs uh, on the property. And it was when I was at the Grand Floridian that I was introduced uh, to convention business uh, and events. And uh, we built a 60,000 square foot convention center. And uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to get a nod from the sales and marketing team and join that side of the, biz the business, sales and marketing, and the group and convention business. And for 16 years, uh, I did corporate meetings and special events for Disney uh, at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, uh, around the globe, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Paris, uh, doing some grand openings, all the corporate meetings for Bob Iger and Michael Eisner back in the day. And that was 16 years of, of really creating uh, an amazing, amazing events for people that love our brand, uh, as well as partners and our employees. I got scooped up uh, in uh, 2009 by a company called Legends Hospitality. And I was uh, left Disney after 31 years and went to work for the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. So I went from the finest name in family entertainment, Disney, to the greatest name in sports entertainment, the Dallas Cowboys. And I did the Super Bowl that year. It was a blast. I learned a great deal about uh, running a stadium. And my team and I were responsible for 347 suites and 10 private clubs, making sure that Jerry Jones had his fried chicken and number, uh, number five hot dogs, uh, Nathan's hot dogs every game. That was his halftime dining experience. And, uh, Left that after a year, did a little work out in Vegas for the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Did some time with an association, Meeting Professionals International. And I was sitting at home in Dallas. That's where Meeting Professionals International was based. And I was in my house, got a call from Disney and said, hey, Barry, would you come back? We've got this uh, pri private club we want to open, a private community. You have experience in private clubs. Uh, so could you come back and help us up open Golden Oak, which is a luxury home community, 300 homes in a community. The homes start at about 2.5 million and go up to about 12 million, as big as 20,000 square foot homes. But everything from landscaping to engineering to security, uh, had responsibility myself and my team for opening that community. Then Disney decided to do a version of a private club that's been uh, in place at Disneyland uh, since 1967, Walt Disney had the idea himself to create this private space to take care of partners, to take care of celebrities. Uh, and then he created this private club at Disneyland that's been around over 50 years, Club 33. So we created our own version at Walt Disney World. We put a private club in each one of the parks. Uh, and uh, I was responsible with a team to get those four beautiful, uh, unique, distinct private clubs uh, open. Uh, they also gave me another job. I had spas and salons for about three years and uh, had all the different spa operations and salon operations at Walt Disney World and helped the team. We created something called Character Couture, a brand new business for Disney, uh, Disney-inspired hair and makeup. So uh, that's kind of the rundown of my career. Uh, I try to keep it as short as possible. I think I only missed one thing that I spent three years with Club Corp. Uh, private club company, which gave me the impetus to come back and run Golden Oak. So thanks for having me here today. I'm excited to talk to you about the six C's. So um, everybody is in a kind of a unique situation right now. I just launch right into it. Uh, we're all trying to figure out day to day exactly what to do with our businesses and how to keep our businesses moving and running. And um, I really thought there were six C's to making sure you could think about these every single day to be able to uh, open your business. But really, it starts with what I call the equation of excellence. 
And it's people plus purpose plus pride equals profit. And this is an equation that I came up with uh, thinking about what's most important in our business today. And it really is people. And that starts with your crew members, your staff, your teams, and those that are around you that help you to deliver the business every day. And it's critical as you think about people, those people that you have on your team, that there's a couple simple things that I think about. Give them the tools and the training they need to do their job, and they are gonna be able to take care of your guests. And that's something that every team member, crew member wants. They wanna know how to do their jobs, they wanna be educated, and they wanna be able to deliver on that. Now the other side of the people equation is your customers. And what do your customers want? They absolutely want to come and have their expectations met, but most of the time they want those expectations exceeded. So if you think about it, if it's a people business that we're in and we've got to have great team members, we've got to train them and give them the tools they need to do their job and convert and what they need, those, those tools and that training will allow them to deliver on the customer experience. The other thing, your next part of the equation is a purpose. So what is your purpose? What is your why? Why do you come to work every day and what is it you're trying to do? You know, at Disney, from the very first day when you start in your orientation, we call it traditions. That very first day, uh, we are told, you are there, you come to work every day to make people happy. We don't launch into, hey, you're a lifeguard or you're a custodial host or you're responsible for mixing drinks or you're serving guests. <clears throat> no, your guests are, your job is to make people happy. So, you know, I have a picture here of, of Starbucks and give you a couple of examples of how I think about purpose. What does Starbucks do for business? Serve coffee and some snacks and small sandwiches and things of that nature. But what is their purpose? What is the reason Starbucks is in business? One, they create a social environment. There's no doubt about that. But they're there to get your morning started. They're there to get your day started. They tell their team members, you're there to start someone's day and get them their beverage, get them their egg sandwich if that's what they're going to order. And your purpose is to do that every single day. So I think it's, it's really clear that you want to think about your business in this equation. What is your purpose? Why do you come to work every day? The next thing I think of it is about pride. You want to instill pride in your team. You want to make them proud to come to work. You want to make it a place where people want to enjoy to come to work and take pride every single day in what they're doing. If you do the first three, hire the right people, train them right, hold them accountable, they in turn are gonna give your guests what they want, create the guest experience, they're gonna to come to work every day with a purpose, they're gonna be prideful about what they're doing, and then you're going to get the profits. Now, I would like to say I'm the smartest guy in the world when I came up with this. It's a very simple equation that we learned at Disney many, many years ago. And it goes like this, cast equals guest equals financial. That came from Walt Disney. Take care of your people, take care of the cast members, take care of your employees. They in turn are there and they will take care of your guests. Worry about those first two and you'll get the next one. We talk a little bit about purpose and you know, this is a picture of Pam Landworth and some of you probably don't know Pam or Henry Landworth who started an amazing place uh, at uh, in Orlando golf called Give Kids the World. And Pam wrote this amazing book and I would suggest that you get it. And I wanna go back to talking a little bit about purpose. Uh, the purpose of, of Give Kids the World is really to create uh, an amazing vacation experience of a lifetime uh, for children and their families, children in particular that have uh, a critical illness. And uh, so, you know, every day the people that uh, operate this amazing place are coming to work every day with that purpose in mind, because unfortunately, uh, some of these children uh, may not see tomorrow. And your job every single day is to make sure that they have a hassle-free, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And they've got these uh, small, uh, beautiful villas that everyone stays in. Uh, they have on-site food and beverage. 
they have activities, and then of course they come to Orlando to visit the theme parks. And so create that workplace, create a purpose, create a reason why uh, you have a culture where everything, where people matter, where your guests matter, an environment where everybody loves to come to work, and that will help your leadership and your employees drive your brand. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the culture of care, and I think you know if you're up to speed and you're reading everything that you can about what's going on uh, in in our industry, especially in the hospitality industry. Uh, it's about care. Uh, it's about the safety and care uh, of our employees, our crew members, our staff, our team, and that of your guests. And so a couple of uh, four different things that I think about is strength, uh, strength in employee engagement, show genuine concern for your team. So uh, I would suggest as you're bringing your teams back, you know, make sure that you're, you're talking to them and they understand that you care about them. And everybody's going through a, a myriad of hardships. They may not show it on the outside, but it might be happening on the inside. So make sure you're showing high, high need and care for your teams. And you need to be visible and you need to listen to them and you need to react uh, to those needs and think about ways uh, to take care of your, your team members. Uh, things are different. Uh, child care is difficult. Um, People have had some serious hardships and maybe uh, have lost someone due to this uh, pandemic. So it's really critical that you show a lot of care and concern. And uh, take the time to know your teams, uh, know your people, uh, get to know them. You know, you, you wanna be able to build relationships because I think if you know more about your team and you know how they tick and you know how you can speak to them and learn about their families and understand what they do everything, every single day to make you successful. I think you know, understanding people's roles is one of my, my things that I really think that you should think about. You know, put yourself in their shoes and the jobs they have to do every day, and you will learn about that job and how critical it is and how important it is to your uh, overall um, operation. So one of the things that I would do when I worked at Disney and at Cowboy Stadium, I would put myself in the team member's shoes and do their jobs. And I think, you know, a lot of times leaders will come in and they'll think, oh my gosh, that's all I'm here for. I'm here to lead. But really you're, you're there to take care of that team because the people around you are the ones that are definitely taking care of your business. So get into the kitchen, get into the stewarding area that those individuals that are working so hard uh, to make sure that your pots and your pans and your silverware and glassware are clean. How critical is that to your operation? Because if you have a failure there, you've got a lot of problems on, on the front of the house side. So you've got to remember how important they are. The same thing with housekeeping and custodial. Uh, you know, one of the tenets at Disney is, is show, and uh, that means cleanliness and how we look. And so, you know, without those two important back of the house functions and not understanding those roles and how critical they are to the overall operation, uh, you're, you're at a loss as a leader. And then be, right. show, show some appreciation. You know, you've got a lot of uh, time to be able to thank people and be grateful for uh, their hard work. And, and so there's a lot of ways that you can uh, take care of your, your employees. Larry, you had a question? Yeah, something you and I talked a bit, uh, matter of fact, I think it was last week, and, and I remember this, you know, in my Disney days that, you know, you had mentioned specifically coming in real early to meet up with the baker and those folks who were working, you know, the early shift. But, you know, I remember the, the third shift workers, you know, cleaning the main street at Magic Kingdom and the landscapers out there. And, you know, they're, they're the, the unforgotten souls that prepare everything. And make it you know possible for a you know fabulous you know next day if you will but exactly, it, it, exactly. yeah I, um, i've gotten a lot of lessons learned by coming in very early in the morning and just talking to the cast or coming in late at night um, i recall a time when i was at the grand floridian i was the resident manager and uh, i came in at about 4 30 in the morning and was just chatting with the custodial team and I said, how's it going? Everything's good. And yeah, Barry, you know, we, we've been out of Zep. And then maybe people out there remember Zep as a cleaner. Yeah, and it was a big cleaner in the time in 1990-something. Um, 
Yeah, we've been out of ZEP for about three weeks. You've been out of ZEP for how long? Three weeks. Oh, well, why don't you have it? Well, we've told our manager, but it seems like they just can't get it in. Okay, so that's a problem. And you learn things, uh, you know. And the other thing you learn is you get to know them a little bit. You come in early in the morning. Um, you know, they, they, ex they love to be valued and appreciated. So if you come in early in the morning with, you know, three dozen donuts or bagels or, or something, uh, have a cup of coffee with them when they're, when they're on their break. Uh, I used to always come into my office at the Grand Florin, I mean, at Golden Oak, uh, through the kitchen. So I never came in through the front door. I always came in through the kitchen because I knew, well, I'll be honest, I knew I would get a pastry from the baker, okay? Um, but uh, I also would be able to see what she's doing and taste what she's doing because she would be in at like six o'clock in the morning because we would open for breakfast at 8.30 and she would first start and we'd have our, our chefs in early that, you know, doing prep work. And it was always exciting to me to listen and see what they were doing and be able to learn what the special of the day is, what the soup of the day was. So I, I think, you know, as you think about it, you know, get in your operation and, and spend some time with your teams and you'll definitely uh, be rewarded. Um, it's, it's certainly one thing that I think makes us great leaders uh, and it would be something I would recommend. So let's talk a little bit about the six C's. I think I have spent a good time on care. Uh, I think care for your employees and care for your guests is a no-brainer right now. Uh, it, it is paramount. I think it's critical. Uh, everyone is thinking through their processes that are going to make their environment safe for their employees and make their environment safe uh, for their guests. So that's, that's critical. And in that is, is listening to those guests and listening to those employees, uh, understanding the guest's anxiety and everyone's anxiety as it relates to uh, the safety measures that we're all having to put in place in our business. And so I think it's important, the next C is to communicate. Uh, you are watching, you know, before your eyes, I'm sure all of you are benchmarking uh, companies like Delta, uh, an airline, the cruise lines, businesses are uh, coming, uh, getting very smart about how they're going to reopen and get those ships running again. Uh, people are uh, inventing ways uh, to make it safer, whether it's a, a mister inside a plane or an attraction. I've seen a, uh, saw a, an article yesterday about uh, an automated uh, mister uh, that will clean ride vehicles after guests have left before they go out into another rotation. It's amazing. But communication, pre-communication, communication daily. The, the challenge everyone's having is you're, you're, you're going to have to pivot and change because the world is changing. Uh, somebody on your team could get sick, which could cause challenges like what's going on in Major League Baseball. Uh, what's happening in some of the bars that opened in Orlando. One person got ill, they had to shut down. It happened in my, uh, my chiropractor's office where uh, the receptionist got sick, uh, was tested positive for the COVID and uh, they had to shut down for 14 days. And their recommendation to me uh, at 8.30 in the morning uh, when I was in there was uh, you need to leave and you need to go get tested, which I did and thankfully uh, I was negative, but communication, pre-shift, post-shift, during the day, you've got to be communicating to your employees. You've got to be upfront about all the safety measures you're putting in place. It's not different from what you did before with pre-shift and post-shift, but now it's even more important to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So you're communicating effectively to your team members, your crew members, and then you're also effectively communicating to your guests. So it's haphazard here in Orlando when you go in a restaurant. Some restaurants clearly posting well in advance before you come in, whether it's on their website or when you arrive, all the measures they are taking to keep you safe. Some are following through with those measures, some are not. I would say that it's clear that you need to let guests know what you're doing to keep them safe. The third one is coaching. I believe that uh, as a leader, 
uh, you've got to be highly visible. Uh, there's time for paperwork. There's time for looking over the P&Ls and all the things that we do. But I've never seen a leader who's effective that sits behind his desk. And I think it's important that you spend time coaching your team members so you're there for them to support them every single day. COVID is one thing, but every single day being a great coach, holding people accountable, providing guidance every single day is one thing that I think is critical. So, you know, when I was at Disney, that was, uh, we changed our name to uh, guest service managers. We used to be a, you know, park operations manager, but everybody became a guest service manager. Why? Because we're there to take care of the guests. So it was critical. We gave a lot of the back of the house functions to certain people so that we could be out there managing our teams, coaching our teams, and taking care of the guests. The next C is collaborate. So right now, I think uh, one of the things that, that I would do and what I would think about is collaborating with your employees, collaborating with your crew members. They have a lot of incredible ideas, as do your customers. Listen to your customers, walk in your customers' shoes, see what their challenges are. They will tell you. And then you're getting that feedback, that rich feedback from your team members who are working day in and day out with the customers. Customers are there every single day. So if you can get some collaboration from them, a survey is one thing, but just asking questions and they will help you collaborate and they will give you feedback, rich feedback, and tell you things that you can do to be successful in your business. Uh, I remember that uh, for a while, uh, we did this thing uh, at Disney called, Are You Kidding Me? And the president of Walt Disney World met with uh, many, many employees, both at the frontline level and at the entry level, at management level, uh, management supervisors, day-to-day -day guest service managers. And he found out they didn't have phones. He found out that there was no way that, the, the, you know, a cost cutting five years ago, uh, they took phones away from leaders. They didn't have any way to call uh, if they needed assistance with a guest or if there was a critical guest situation happen happening. Everybody got a phone. And you know, it was one of those things, are you kidding me? Why is that happening? Uh, so get out there, learn from your cast, learn from your employees, your team member and your crew members, as well as listening to your guests. The next thing, number five is of the six C's is to calibrate. So in, in, with what's happening today, uh, you are changing and going to have to be nimble in your business. And you're going to have to look at every single thing that you're doing, whether it's uh, redesigning a menu to be more cost effective uh, and one day and then having to change it the next day because you can't get product in because of a challenge with a vendor because of COVID. Uh, or you have to make a change in the way you're staffing. Every single day you have to calibrate and watch your business and be able to manage it and look at it differently and think about it and calibrate what's working and what's not working. Again, you'll learn that and then you have to go back and communicate it. So it's, while it seems very challenging, one of the things that you can do is just calibrate your business and look at it every single day and make change make changes that make it easy for the guests to do business with you and make it easy for your employees to come to work. Don't make it difficult. Um, the sixth C is celebrate. You're going to celebrate the successes and you're going to celebrate failure. Uh, if you're not taking risk, if you're not making mistakes, uh, you're probably not a good business person because guess what? We all make mistakes. It happens all the time at Disney. We look perfect on the outside, uh, but uh, we celebrate successes and we celebrate failures and we learn from them. Uh, so I think that's one of the things that I would share with you is to celebrate your employees, celebrate your guests as well. Uh, example, you know, I, I went to a, a dinner, a lunch the other day and it was really nice that they actually, um, at the end of the meal, one, they thanked me. So that's kind of a celebration. And two, they said, hey, we are so thankful that you came in. Please come visit, visit us again. And here's a complimentary glass of wine. Now, how did that make me feel? Made me feel great. 
I think conversely on the other side with your, with your team members, celebrate that they're there helping you be successful, find ways to recognize them and make them feel special. Uh, that's what people want right now. And I think if you continue to do these six C's, the only way we were successful at Disney uh, was this. And I know you see this hidden Mickey. So there really is a seventh C and that's consistency. Uh, day in and day out, it's not easy uh, to come in every day and focus on the basics. Uh, the basics is what makes Disney successful. It starts with safety, then courtesy, then efficiency, and then sh uh, show, then efficiency. The last one being all the numbers and all the digits that we all think about. But if you think about safety every day of your team members and your guests, you think about courtesy, uh, you think about show how the place looks, is it clean, are we doing all the right things to make sure our guests are safe, uh, you will get the efficiency piece. And so consistently, day in and day out, you gotta focus on those basics. With that, I'm gonna leave it open for some questions. Hey, Barry, thank you so, so much. But I, I want you to go back to the, uh, the six C's board, if you wouldn't mind, if you could scroll sure. back a minute. Um, some, some footnotes that, you know, I'd love for you to provide some, some feedback and or stories, but, you know, and, and the word empowerment definitely is overused and, you know, it's something out there that we, you know, tried to, work with, I remember the, the cast members, you know, at Disney a lot. And when you were talking about coaching, you know, I always use the term, you know, management by walking around or walk the talk, which was one of our, you know, senior VPs, Bob Small, that always, you know, use that terminology. But where does empowerment fit in here? And have you got any examples out there of, you know, how that empowerment failed, but also was a positive? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've seen the pendulum swing where empowerment uh, has been given and it works really well. Uh, and then I've seen where all of a sudden someone uh, from a finance point of view makes a decision and says, okay, if it's this problem, it's a $25 remuneration. If it's this problem, it's $50. If this, listen, today with social media, uh, you're in trouble if you mess up a guest experience. And, you know, uh, my friend Lee Cockrell says, uh, you know, why would you want to make a customer upset? They are the lifeblood of your business. And so I, I think of a situation I remember many years ago uh, where there was a problem at, a, at the front desk. It was a guest that was very upset, um, something to do with a room issue. And uh, the, the front office manager said, hey, I'm so sorry, it's our fault. So the first thing you want to do is listen you want to apologize, even if it's not your fault. You know, I'm so sorry because people are upset for a reason. And if you start out with, I am very sorry, a sincere, genuine, I'm sorry. You may not have caused the problem. It could have been something else, but you have to apologize. And then you got to figure out how to solve. So, you know, one of the solves we had was to allow someone to go up and have dinner. And this happened to be a party of uh, six adults. They had two rooms. And the, the front office manager did the right thing. He said, hey, go up and have dinner at the Californian Grill, enjoy dinner and uh, have a nice time. So they went up and it was a really, uh, probably a millennial couple, couples and they were having a great time and they proceeded to order uh, six bottles of Dom Perignon with their dinner. <laughs> well, at the time, I think they were about a $99 a bottle. I'm sure most of you know now it's much more expensive. And so, what happened was, oh my gosh, you know, all of a sudden, oh my God, Bill, I'm just making up the name. Bill did that. He sent those people up there and they had this incredible dinner. Boy, he really screwed up. No, he didn't make a mistake. He did the right thing. He took care of the guests. He made them happy. Now, what do we do? We regroup and we said, okay, moving forward, when we send somebody up to dinner for remuneration, for a compensation, for a, a bad issue, uh, we're going to now let the sommelier at the California Grill select a bottle of red wine and white wine. So then we had to put a process in place so that that wouldn't happen again, happen again when everybody, where someone goes up and just goes crazy on, on uh, you know, drinking all our, our product. So it, it's, he didn't do anything wrong. It's just figuring out. So I think 
you know, my philosophy was always, um, if it's not illegal, immoral, or unethical, if you can solve a guest problem through remuneration, first you want to apologize. You want to figure out what's wrong. You and I talked about this yesterday, Larry, with, you know, someone that is supposed to go on an excursion, right? And inevitably, gosh, sometimes, I, I know this has probably happened to somebody out there, um, you know, the, the reservation gets messed up. And here you have the Jacobson family of 12 that show up to go out on this beautiful sunset cruise. They show up at five o'clock, uh, the boat's full. There's a problem. Okay, you gotta figure it out. Now, maybe they made a mistake with the reservation, maybe they were on the wrong day, but the first thing you want to do is apologize. And then you want to go into, I'm going to help you mode. And that's what empowerment and engagement, I'm there to help you. I'm there to solve this. And probably there's nothing you do, but you know, you're probably going to have to bring them back the next day, do it complimentary, throw in a hat or a t-shirt or an upgrade on their experience and apologize. Now, the one thing I will tell you about empowerment and problems and everything else, it's small. If you, if you look at your full year of operation, everybody makes mistakes. Disney makes mistakes. When you look at it at Disney in totality, billions and billions of dollars of revenue coming in all the time, the compensation, the remuneration, the apologies are very small, but we do make mistakes. And, and, you really want to go out there and figure out ways to solve those problems. Just to, to add to it, and please, you know, feel free to, to um, add to it as well. But I remember the days that, you know, um, we'd go up to, a let's say, the, the, the table at the restaurant and, you know, the server happened to wait on those guests, really didn't give that apology, didn't say sorry, didn't get into, you know, trying to, you know, uh, work with the guest and, and help them. Oh, let me go get the manager. Well, then the manager would go and the manager would, you know, let's say sorry and, you know, kind of try to get out of it because they're very nervous about their, you know, other expense account where, you know, I can't give away anything and nothing really happens other than, okay, let me, let me buy a drink. Well, the whole meal was shot, right? So at the end of that, then guess where those people go next? They go to the front desk, they ask for the general manager. What's the general manager do? He comps the whole room this day right so if it's not taken care of immediately or to the to, you know the best of, of that person's ability uh you can always call in your resources but the more you take care of it and and show empathy and show that you know that the concern you're gonna you're gonna win 99 percent of the time yeah i i, I agree with that 100 percent. i i always used to say <laughs> I don't think we're going to shut down the Walt Disney Company if we give somebody a complimentary room night or a complimentary meal or we create something magical. OK, so, you know, you apologize to let's say it's the the um, person going on on the sunset cruise. You know what? We apologize so much. Please come tomorrow. You know, we're going to give you all hats and shirts. But guess what? I see you've got a, a 12 year old son or daughter there. Uh, I'd like to make them the captain of the ship of the day. And here's what, if you can get them here a half an hour early, you know, come up with a costume, come up with ways to think about how do I create something that's a, a next level if I got to go to my deep back pocket and make somebody feel special. Hey, we're going to let you hoist the sail. It's a tradition. Or, you know, how do you do something that makes somebody special? I, I think the other thing, you know, when I, when I think about, you know, the guest experience, I mean, this is really what I love to do. It's, it's all about listening to the guest, knowing what makes them tick. How can you make them feel special? You know, I recall a, a guest at Golden Oak. Uh, we have, every restaurant has a menu, but this guest in particular was like, gosh, you know, I really would love some Alaskan King crab legs. Okay, no problem. Well, wait a minute, they're not on the menu. Well. Golden Oak was probably about five miles away from Disney's Yacht and Beach Club, where every night they serve Alaskan King crab legs, all you can eat, on the Cape May buffet. Bring them over to Golden Oak. Now, we took it one step further. Because she loved Alaskan King crab legs so much, instead of giving her the plastic bib, you know, that most people get, 
we went out and got a beautiful uh, cloth bib napkin, if you will, put her name on it. So when she sat down to have that meal, I think it cost me about $7 to do that. Uh, boom. It was, a, it was a surprise, a delight. And this, it, it's a legendary story. So, you know, I, I think there's ways, not in big dollars, uh, you know, use the assets you have to be able to create magic. And that's what I would say you should do. And, and just to be back on that, and, and that would take us another full hour to, to go through this one, but it's all about making memories. You know, and, and everybody on this call and everybody out there, it's, it's the memory makers of that, you know, guest experience. So I guess the last one I've gotten, and I'm going to turn over time because we do have some questions that have come in. You know, recognition or um, or the, the fact that somebody does do a great job with a guest recovery, it's celebrating that as you put up, but really making it it you know well known so people don't have those hes hesitancies to take corrective action you know on their own. So giving everybody confidence that hey, could have been done a little bit different, but guess what? It was done, and the guest walked away happy. Yeah, there's, there's nothing better, you know, Disney, we're the greatest at storytelling. So as, as you know, some people don't like recognition uh, in a big public way, but I think you can take learnings from success and failure on doing the right thing for a guest, and you can build stories. Um, you know, one of, one of my favorite stories I, is when I was in the private club business, the toaster story, had a, had a club member very upset because we couldn't uh, get her uh, toast uh, hot every day when she came in with her ladies group to play nine holes five or six days a week. And, uh, you know, I, I, she was never happy. And uh, I looked at it one day and grabbed my captain or my chief uh, uh, person's chief server. And I said, you know what, tomorrow when she comes in, get a toaster and plug it in and toast the toast at the table. Now, that's not a brilliant idea. It may seem like it, but it's a story that now I can tell is that if you're empowered to think. Think how you can solve and create, as you said, Larry, the magic, the get that little thing that will solve somebody's day, make them feel better. Maybe she'll play nine holes better. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it made her happy. And it, yeah. it didn't cost me any money, you know? It was just go that next level to take care of a guest. Super. Um, you want to get into a few of the questions? Sure. We, we've received a few in advance, and we have a few um, as well on the Q&A. Uh, the first one there is from Gabriel. Uh, Barry, how do you deal with guests? This must be a cruise ship guest. <laughs> how do you deal with guests that are actually happy for the experience but are still looking for something to ask for a refund? Yeah, they're looking for that little chink in the armor and say, well, it wasn't quite perfect, so I'd like that discount. Yeah, I, I think, you know, first you have to uh, listen to them. Uh, you know, I use this model and, you know, many people have heard this model before. Listen, apologize, solve, and thank. So sometimes uh, you got to listen to them through thoroughly and genuinely listen to what they're saying. Um, you got to apologize. Gee, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that that diminished your experience. Um, the solve will map, you know, how do you do something that makes them feel special or uh, without giving back cash is what you're asking me. You know, the next time you're on the ship, we, we'd love to host you for uh, cocktails. Um, you know, it, it's a small, you know, we all know food cost and, and, you know, there's certain things. Look at your array of amenities you know, high perceived value, low cost, you know, and how do you make people think, oh my gosh, that was special. You know, it, at Disney, if we could uh, give them preferred seating for a parade, that didn't cost us anything. If we could give them a fast pass. So I would encourage you to, again, what I was saying is look at your assets that you have and, and can you figure out those things that might make people happy uh, without costing you a large sum of money. Um, there are guests who are professionals at this. We all know it. But again, uh, as I used to say when I worked at the Polynesian many years ago, it is such a small, small percentage. You, 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 you got to just apologize and take care of them and move on. 
and thank them. You know, you feedback is something that everybody should listen to. So I think you have to thank those guests as well. Okay. Well, and I, I guess part of part of it is going to that perceived value, providing something of really great perceived value for the guest that isn't necessarily a direct hit to your to your budget, but has a big value for them. Like like the preferred seating for the parade, as an example. Yeah, maybe maybe for somebody uh, going on a cruise, you know, we apologize. You know what? We'd like to give you uh, early onboarding. Uh, does that cost anybody money? No, uh, we, we're gonna take care of your luggage fees. Okay, that might cost you a little money with your gratuity system. Uh, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of what could happen on a ship, but there's, you know, gee, we're gonna let you uh, get a tour of the captain's, uh, of, the, of the, the engine room or something, Larry. I just, I mean, go back to Gabriel and, and Gabriel is a tour operator in St. Martin. Um, is, you know, again, it's, it's back to the circumstances, obviously, but, you know, if it's something that, you know, the guest is rushing back to the, to the ship, you know, is it something you can get with a Shorex manager and ask the Shorex manager for a little, you know, help, assuming you've got a great relationship with them. There's always something that could be, you know, done and in most cases, very, very cheap or, you know, um, for, for nothing. So it's kind of using your resources that are out there um, et cetera. So it all depends on the circumstance, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, another question here from, from Kirby, keeping with the, um, with the, the, the C theme, uh, in providing feedback to employees, where might congratulate fit in the model? Um, okay. Congratulate. Uh, again, every, every day, uh, we have many, many achievements that happen uh, on on the ship or in a restaurant or in a theme park, uh, you know, recognition would happen annually for everyone who was meeting their service awards, uh, their or five year service awards. Uh, I think it's important uh, that you create a recognition, a congratulation program uh, to uh, make sure that you're recognizing uh, people for good work and holding people accountable if they need a little more coaching uh, for that. And I don't know if I got that question right because I, I want to understand, is there, is there something more about congratulate that I'm missing? Well, and I, 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 mean, I think you've answered it. I guess Kirby can come back if he wants more. I think you've probably answered it. And, and um, you know, I, I've got, let me just, I know uh, Larry has one, but I have another one here that came in advance as well. Um, you know, Disney, Disney has the luxury of having a huge infrastructure. They, I guess, technically, they have their own university there, right? Um, how, do, how do I, as a small business owner, how do I, um, you know, implement and, and do this kind of methodical training when I don't necessarily have the, um, the infrastructure to lean against like a big company might, uh, such as Disney? Well, it, it starts with you as the business owner, in my opinion, uh, to establish uh, the reason, the purpose of your business and why you're creating that business and why people are coming to work for you to do that business. Secondly, you know, one of the things that we do at Disney, and again, for every business, you've got to have standard operating guidelines. Uh, we call them standard operating procedures back in the old days, but guidelines of what people need to do every single day. And I say that you have to commit those to writing. You have to train those every single day. So one of the things I would say is I'm sure you have some uh, stellar team members who could maybe take that on as a project if you don't have those in place. Those people that have been with you longest who understand how it should be done. Uh, those people at Disney, we used to call them qualified trainers, who would then help and train uh, those team members that are new and make sure that every aspect of the operating plan was being executed every day by those frontline team members. So I think it, it's something you cannot not do, um, no matter the size of your business. I think it's critical that you put those, those in place. Uh, Yes, Disney has a big machine for that with the Disney University, and Disney's been around over, uh, you know, 100 years from Disneyland, and now Walt Disney World's celebrating 50 years, I think, next year. Um, those, those are standard. They're out there. 
um, for us. I, I, just, just as a follow-up, Barry, um, you know, now is a great time if you don't have these written guidelines or maybe they've changed in this kind of post-COVID environment, now is a, a great time to take those out, dust them off, uh, review them. We'd be happy to help you review them if you'd like, uh, but now's a great time while maybe it's still quieter uh, because the guests haven't uh, started yet to travel specifically to your destination. Absolutely. Sorry. A question for you from Rick. Barry, do you have a story of a very challenging situation you were brought into and you use the C's to help? Yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll relate a story at um, Golden Oak uh, with uh, a, a pest, uh, pest management situation uh, that was getting out of control between two uh, homeowners. Uh, there was a pesky little thing called a rat. Uh, it wasn't a mouse, uh, so, and it wasn't Mickey rat. It was, uh, rats were uh, coming uh, into uh, a gentleman's property, and his belief was that those rats were being caused by the woman next door whose dog uh, was uh, doing its business in the yard, and they were not picking it up in a timely manner. Now, do you believe this is a problem? This is a very difficult problem. I mean, um, first of all, we all know that that type of uh, animal is very unseemly and, and means dirty and everything else, uh, and uh, ugly too. It complicated all, he had his granddaughter living with him who was uh, scared to death to go outside because these uh, things were climbing around. Um, so my, my uh, community association manager and I stepped in. The first thing we did was make sure we cared about the situation. You know, uh, many people could just say, hey, call the pest management company. That's your problem, not mine. You, you know, you, when you signed your agreement, your homeowners association agreement at Disney, uh, and, and, you know, we have great lawyers, uh, you were told that there could be any kind of animal that could come onto your property because it backed up to wetlands, to the woods, if you will. I mean, you're talking everything from raccoons to snakes to cougars. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but we could have blown it off, but it was causing a challenge, not only for the woman uh, who was next door with the dog to the gentleman with the situation. Um, we stepped in and we worked with, we brought in, so we, we, we constantly were communicating with them, obviously, but we brought in uh, Disney Pest Management as an, as an expert to come help us try to figure this out. We in turn then let them hire, each person hired the right person. They hired a pest management person for uh, the situation with the rats. And the woman next door actually hired somebody to come pick up her dog's excrement. Okay, these, remember gang, these are multi-million dollar homes and people that can afford somebody to pick up their dog food. Anyhow, um, it was not getting solved. We had, the, this pest management company brought in infrared cameras, they laid out traps, they were watching these uh, rodents going across the fence. Meanwhile, the gentleman is hot because he believes the lady's dogs are causing it. He did all kinds of research on the internet that said, no, oh, these rats are coming because of dog poop. Listen, uh, we got involved. We cared. We collaborated with the right people. We eventually figured it out that what had happened was when the gentleman built his home and put his outdoor kitchen outside, our friendly friend, the rat, and his family decided to take up residence underneath this grill. So every time he would use his grill, we all know the drippings go, the rats were in there very, very happy. And if you don't know anything about rats, I learned a great deal. They can flatten themselves and get under, you have no idea. It was the craziest situation. But we eventually figured it out, and what we had to do, he had to do it, he had to tear his grill out, he had to take care of what the situation was under there, and we fixed it. And then we celebrated about it. I mean, you know, it took, it was probably going on for four months. Now, I know that's a long story, but it started with what I believe is truly the essence of hospitality. It's caring about somebody else. It's taking care of somebody. And, you know, a lot of people can't do it, but if you care about your guests and you care about your employees, that's the first step. 
we got a few more minutes left, but we got a few more questions to, to ask of you. So sure. um, this one's from Tamara. What course or courses does Mr. Jacobson, Barry, suggest for a small high-end tour operator to work on all these excellent guidelines he is explaining? Uh, you know, any, any type of hospitality course or training course, um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time reading every single day. The internet is just an amazing, uh, you know, opportunity to learn. And, you know, I, again, I'm always looking up, you know, customer experience, steps of service, uh, customer experience, how to solve a guest problem. Um, it's all out there. And there's, there's simple tactics and training that you can get right off of the internet. Uh, you can certainly go to your local community college or college, but, um, you know, for me, I, I have a business degree. I, I got my master's degree, but I really learned it by being involved and being in the guest experience. And, you know, you can, all of us can look at what's a great guest experience and what's a poor one. It's happened to all of us. And, you know, my, my belief is that your job every day is to come in and try to create flawless guest execution. Now, look, that puts a lot of pressure on you, right? Uh, your teams are supposed to do it every single day. And every now and then you're going to make a mistake. But if you come in with a mindset and teach about the customer service levels that we deliver are to exceed the expectations of our guests every single day, to make them happy, to come to work every day with a purpose. If you're a tour operator, you know, if it was me, I'm going to have the most amazing, memorable experience. That's what we do. We come in every day to create memories. Okay, so what's your part in the memory? You're to make people happy. You're to smile. You're to talk to the children. Treat people special. Treat people with dignity and respect. Make them feel comfortable. So I would say as a start, you know, there are a lot of um, accreditations that you can get for customer experience that are on the internet. And, uh, you know, I'm going to put, put a plug in. Yes. Sure, sure the heck can contact us and then we can get a hold of you, right? So, yeah, I have my own uh, little consulting business. Can, uh, can happen. So, uh, but anyway, anybody has, a, has that interest, please contact Barry on this uh, uh, LinkedIn and email number etc so um just a couple other quick ones uh this comes from anna and she says go the extra mile smiley face always a great policy um donald says i like the six c's plus consistency concept really speaks to an, uh, an all-embracing culture leadership is key as you said um so some, some great comment so okay. with that barry what can i say other than this has been awesome Thank you so, so much. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me on. And, you know, I, I think, again, I, I love to, I love this business. It's, it's a passion of mine to make sure things are special for people. You know, I learned it from my mom and it's simple. Just take care of others. That's what this business is all about. And if you have a tough one, a tough customer, you know, just solve it, figure it out, make them happy, apologize and, and uh, figure out a way to make them uh, feel better and, guess what? They're going to, they're going to rave about you. Yep. Definitely. Okay. Again, thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. All right. Um, for all of our listeners today, we look forward to seeing you next week for webinar on Wednesday, August 5th at two o'clock, Sea Dream Yacht Club and the Norwegian Cruise Bubble. This unusual time calls for innovative out-of-the-box solutions, and that is exactly what the executive team at Sea Dream did. They reimagined their cruise business and identified a unique niche market in Norway summer during the pandemic, they are operating their fleet of two ships by essentially creating a Norwegian cruise tour tourism bubble. This creation solution, creative solution, is keeping Sea Dreams onboard staff employed and is keeping tourism in Norway for Norwegians alive for the summer. Emilio Freeman, Vice President of Itinerary and Destinations, will provide this overview with us next week. Please visit our website, www.destinationstogether.com register for this webinar. As always, we'll be sending out a reminder, and if you follow us on social media, we'll have some links there as well. Please don't hesitate to share our website with others. Many thanks to everybody for joining us today. Sorry we went a little bit over. Be strong, be safe, be healthy. Again, Barry, thanks so much. Tom?
All right, th thank you very much for, uh, for the presentation. It was awesome. I think we covered a lot of ground and there were still uh, a few more questions we could have gone over, um, but obviously we ran, we ran out of time. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for, for listening in. We greatly appreciate the support. Uh, take care of yourselves and take care of each other and wear a mask. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Destination together. Won't you set me free? I'll take a train, a plane, a big cruise ship. It doesn't really matter to me. Destination people always seem to find the magic and the mystery in this beautiful world.